What's up guys right here? So this is um creating your first VFX part two. And we're just gonna like script this into like a move. Uh you'll probably see it on screen. I'll probably put like a preview. But yeah, that's what we're gonna make. Um if you haven't watched a previous video, go watch it. Cause you'll need these meshes. Alright, so what we want to start off with is a local script you can just name it whatever uh, i'm gonna just keep it named local script do you need a server script and then you need a remote event inside of replicated storage so you see remote event script local script and uh you can honestly name all three of these spin and uh don't do don't do what I just did, but pretty much you got the local script, the starter pack, server script, server script, service, remote event, and replicated storage. So now go to the local script, do local UIS is equal to game hit service, user input service, and I'm just gonna like scroll in so you guys can see. And then we're gonna do local RP is equal to game get service replicated storage and then local spin is equal to RP wait for child spin. So this is referencing the replicated storage. This is referencing the spin uh, remote event. And then we're gonna do like a client base like a debounce. So we're just gonna do local debounce is equal to false. Local CD is a good one. CD is just cooldown. Uh, I guess I'll just name it cooldown for you. And then what you want to do is do UIS dot input begin colon connect function and then input comma is typing. And you should get this. Make sure you have that correct. Now what you want to do is if not is typing then and then press enter and you'll have this. This is pretty much saying if the player is not like typing in chat or interacting with any UI, then the, they can use the move and then do if input dot key code. And I see like a lot of you guys mess this up. Make sure K and C are capitalized because if not you'll get errors but yeah make sure the k and c is capitalized and do equal like double equal which means equal to and then enum dot key code dot e or whatever key you want and make sure that key is uppercase so you see how all of these are like uppercase whenever you go to like a letter so yeah e is going to be our button that we use and then we're going to do if debounce. Well, actually, we can do if not debounce. Then, but if this is confusing a little bit, then we can just use if debounce is equal to false. Then debounce, not delay, debounce is equal to true. And this is what you should have. And then spin colon fire server in parentheses that's all you need and then under like this function drop a few lines and do spin dot on client event colon connect function and then we're gonna do wait cooldown and then debounce is equal to false so this is just like the cooldown for the move um and it will reset the move and let you use it after you know how many seconds has passed so this is what you need for the local script and if you're one of those people that's like oh my god you need to do server debounce bro just on the tutorial all right just a tutorial I'm trying to keep this simple you feel me all right so copy these two lines because we don't need to retype them 
go to the server script and paste them in then do spin on server event colon connect function player because when you whenever you fire a remote you get the player like the player gets like sent through the function because that's who fired the remote and then we're going to do local character let's see to the player dot character and then local humanoid let's see to the character dot humanoid and local humanoid I'm gonna just do humanoid root part is equal to character dot humanoid root part. So pretty much you're just getting a character of the player and then a humanoid and a humanoid root part of the player as well. Now we're gonna do we're gonna use a module too. Eh, do we need a mod? We don't need a module. Um actually no, a module would be useful. So if you hover over the server script in the explorer tab, click the plus and then a module and then just name it spin module. And then I like to change the name of the actual module to that. So like it's the same, like it's the name is the module. <laughs> and then you want to go back to the server script drop a few lines right here in the local spin module is equal to require because this is how you're able to access a module script script dot spin module and that's all you need to do to require it sorry for the word cut all right so we've required the module right now we're going to make like two mo um functions we're going to do functions so what you got to do is function spin module dot whatever name that you want to give the function I'm going to give the name rotate right and then parentheses and then click enter and you should get the end which closes off the function and then drop a line and then do function spin module rocks and we're going to do like a rock like sort of thing as well so now what you want to do is uh just make like a part and we're going to give it uh where is it the slate just to make it like look like a rock and then make the size uh three by three by three right so now that you got that make sure uh can collide is false Sorry for the word cut. Alright. So we have like the, the part that we just made. Name it rock. Make sure can't collide is false and anchor is true. And then uh select all of the meshes that we made the previous video. And um what is it? Yeah, so make sure can't collide is false as well. And uh anchored is true as well for those. And uh just name them individually so i'm gonna like take this apart a little bit so like the the spikes we'll just call it spikes actually this we can call spear one this we can call spear two yes yeah, spear two and this can be called cell shade so spear one, spear two, cell shade, and uh, spikes. And then just select all of these, right? Now right click, or don't right click the module, uh, click the plus in the module, add a folder, name the folder meshes. Now select all the parts and drag them into the meshes folder. So they'll like disappear from the screen, but they're in like the folder, you feel me? Now go to the module at the top above line one, drop a few lines above there, and then do local meshes is equal to script dot meshes. Then do local tween service is equal to game 
get servers between servers and then local debris is equal to game get service debris so this will allow us to tween like the move and this will allow us to get rid of the move so now in the server script we want to make a folder so local folder is equal to instance dot new folder folder dot name is equal to player dot name dot dot so these two dots are called like concatenation which is what you do when you're adding uh anything to a string right and then we're just going to call this spin move right sorry for the work but so now we got to parent the folder let's get a workspace we can just parent it like that and i'm not going to teach quarantine so i'm gonna just show y'all like uh what is it a spawn function so just do spawn function that and that's what your spawn function should look like and then do spin module oh wait let me just discuss what this does but before that just do spin module dot rotate and then put the folder humanoid root part right this is all you need all right now what spawn function does is when a script is like loading it's going from top to bottom right and let's say like something like a while loop while true do now if we're like running this script the script will stop here because this is yielding or like stopping the script so what you do to get around like that and to make different threads um you use like spawn function there's other things you can do as well um like if statements coroutines etc but for the sake of this video we're just going to use spawn function and then we're going to do a uh, spin module rotate that and then we're going to make another spawn function and then we're going to do spin module dot rocks folder you know the part so now go to the module and in the brackets for the functions just do folder even though root part and you can just copy it and paste it there all right now we want to get started we're going to do raycast so it can be like yeah we want to do raycast hmm. no let's not do raycast we'll be fine without raycast so what we want to do first is spawn the first sphere so we're going to do local sphere one is equal to meshes that sphere colon clone and then sphere dot c frame is equal to humanoid part dot c frame times c frame dot new um and we're just gonna leave this blink for a little bit. Now we're gonna change the size. Size is equal to vector three dot new. And let me just look at the previous size right now. We're gonna do one one one. So one by one by one. And then sphere dot parent is equal to folder. So now the C frame, right? We're gonna do zero negative three zero so this negative three is gonna pretty much just place it under our character and if we like test this and um, i'm going to test it by the way uh just to get like the distance as we need but if we did like use raycast then we'd be able to do this like without having to do like all the c-frame like that but we're just gonna do it this way and then you press e or whatever button you're using and bam that's your sphere and i think i'm gonna do a little bit more like 0.25 
just gonna use E. Yes. I did not mean to do that actually. Uh, hold up. Oh, okay. So yeah, keep it a negative three point uh two three point two five. And then I do local sphere two is equal to meshes. Here's sphere two. And sphere two dot c frame is equal to sphere one dot c frame. Sphere two dot size is equal to vector three dot new. Uh, we're gonna do two by two by two. And then sphere two dot parent. You get a folder and then the cell shading will be local cell you get a, not instance but meshes dot cell shade clone and then cell dot c frame is equal to sphere one dot c frame so that size is equal to a size that's in between both of these so i'm gonna do 1.5 1.5 1.5 so that's in between both and then parent is folder so now when we test this mm, let me load let me press e Bam, you see how like it spawns like right here the loaded character. So that's what we want. And now I'm gonna make them smaller a little bit. So we're gonna do 1.5 here, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and then the middle between that is 1.25. And this should be good. So what you need right now is this. And that's what it looks like so far. Now we're gonna do tweening. Uh, I think I already taught tween servers, but pretty much it's just like a smooth transition of something, right? Of an object. So tween servers colon create, and then the object that we want to tween, comma tween info dot new. So how long we want it to take to tween the object? And we're just gonna do like 0.5 we want it like fast pretty much and then comma and then like these squiggly brackets which is like next to the p key and then do size is equal to sphere one times oh wait sphere one dot size times and uh, I'm just looking at the size right now. We're going to do times 50. I mean, not 50, 15. And then outside of the parentheses, colon play. And this is how you do like a one line tween. So when we play test this. Yeah, you see how it like tweens out. And actually, I wanted this like a little bit faster, so I'm gonna do 0 0.25 rather than 0.5. And pretty much, you wanna do the same thing for all three. So I just copy paste, make sure to change the names. So this one's spear one, spear two. This is cell and cell, right? And we want them to change at the same rate just for it to look like better, but if you need to see that's what it looks like and then we're gonna test sorry for the work okay so we're gonna test and then press e and bam we have that but you see like how it's like kind of uneven it's like not what we really want uh so we're gonna give it like set sizes actually rather than multiplying so we're gonna do vector three dot new 15 by 15 by 15 and then vector 3 dot new uh 
15.5. Now I'm just copy this just to make it easier to put. And then we're gonna do vector 3.new, not from axis, .new, 16, 16, 16. And I'm gonna just save this. So that's what we have it. I'm gonna teach y'all a nifty trick and like delay. But yeah, we press E. Boom. You know, and it's like that, right? So now what you want to do is add the the spikes, right? So drop a line, spikes, let's see if it meshes, dot spikes, colon clone, spikes, dot C frame is equal to spirit dot C frame, spirit one dot C frame, and then spikes dot size is equal to vector three dot new, and then when you do one by one by one i want to do one by one yeah we're gonna do one by one and then spikes that parent is equal to folder so that's what we add it and then we could just do a tween as well and create spikes tween service dot new not tween service tween info dot new 0.25 and I'm just gonna like break these up so you can see it better and then size is gonna be 25 to 25 so that's what we got and now we're gonna test this and this should be like one of our last tests well, not one of our last, but of like cloning the models, right? So we press E and it does that. So this means I have to like change the C frame. So that's what I'm going to do. So for this, uh, we can put it be uh, in front. Of, no. So make a space uh, behind this like uh, parentheses and do comma. And then space C frame, and it's gonna be blue, cause that's because like C frame is just like a key, like a keyword for Lua. So C frame is equal to spikes dot C frame. Now it's very important that you multiply the C frame rather than just setting a new C frame, because if you just do like, hold up. So if you just do C frame dot new let's say like zero 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 something like that this will spawn like somewhere in the middle of the map rather than where we actually want it to go so just gonna replace it back with that time C frame dot new zero one zero so we just wanted to like shift upwards right now I'm just gonna save again just to make sure and then press play. Now press E. And bam, this is exactly what we want. Okay. So we can stop testing. Sorry for the word cut. So now we're gonna learn how to rotate it, right? And uh we're gonna need run service. So just at the top. I'm just going to drop a line and do run service as you could a game get service run service pretty much I think this is just like a constant like updating like function just think of it as like that so what we're going to do now and we're going to do this to prevent like data leaks so we're going to do local connection right and then drop a line it will be just like empty like that and then do connection is equal to run service dot heartbeat colon connect 
function and then enter so what this is going to allow us to do is we're pretty much setting this updating function to connection and this will allow us to disconnect it after the move is done right because we don't want this to constantly run after the move is done because that's just going to create a lot of data leaks and like a lot of lag for your game and you don't want that so once you have that drop a line again and then do delay and I want my move to last like three seconds right function so this will wait three seconds before running and then we're gonna do if connection and then so if connection is something and it's not nil then connection colon disconnect and this will just save us a bunch of a bunch of time and uh resources by disconnecting the function as well so now we're gonna make the stuff like rotate so the only really thing that we need to rotate is sphere 2 and spikes so sphere 2.c frame is equal to sphere 2.c frame times c frame dot new and instead of c frame dot new we're going to do c frame dot angles this will allow us to rotate sorry for the workup so yeah we're going to use c frame dot angles to rotate the objects so the first we're just going to put zero and then we're going to do math dot rad so math dot rad is radians so pretty much angles need radians to like rotate or like to do this correctly so we're going to do math.rad and then we're going to do like 15 so it's going to convert 15 uh, degrees to radians right and then comma zero and uh the bigger the number the faster it's going to spin you know you know we're just going to test this So yeah, press E. You see how it's rotating. And we're gonna rotate it the other way actually. But yeah, that's how you have it rotate. I'm gonna do that, and we're just gonna do like ten uh, for me. And then we're gonna do spikes. Dot C frame is equal to spikes. Dot C frame. Now you don't have to make your spikes rotate. I like to make my spikes rotate sometimes, but that's honestly up to you. And we're gonna like play. So now press E. So it's gonna rotate for three seconds and then it's gonna stop, you see? So we're gonna make it make it like fade out at that point, right? So now that we have like this, under the last tween, we're gonna do delay two seconds, cause that's two seconds out of three seconds, and like the last second we want it to fade away, right? So now we're gonna do a loop for i, and instead of i, just do underscore, cause you don't like need anything from the first like variable and then we're going to do object and pairs folder get children do and then we're going to do tween service create object tween info dot new one second because that's how long it's going to take to disappear after waiting two seconds, then we're gonna do transparency to get a one and then play. So this is gonna give it like a nice fade out effect, right? Sorry for the work up. So yeah, it's gonna give it like a nice fade out. And we're just gonna test this. So I'll come over here and press E. 
And then you see that one second, it's gonna go away. So yeah, this is pretty much us making that effect. Um, I want to make this spin faster, like 30. I'm gonna test this real quick. Press E. And then yeah. It's rotating itself. So now we have like this situated. Now we're gonna do rocks. So you can just like minimize the function by clicking the arrow next to it. And then coming down here. Now we're gonna need a loop. <laughs> So bear with me with this loop, because uh, I don't want you guys to get like lost. So we're going to do local angle. This is going to be the angle we need to keep track of when doing this loop. And then we're going to do 4i to get a 1. Now, depending on how much, like how many rocks you want, would depend on how long this function runs so let's say we want uh, let's say we want like 15 maybe do we want 15 yeah we could do 15 and i'm just making sure this number is a multiple of like a multiple of 360 right because 360 is a full circle you want to keep that in mind 360 is a full circle and Divided by 15 is equal to 24, right? Or you could do like 10. And if you like divide it by 10, it'll be 36, right? Not 26, 36. All right? So just keep in mind, this number, the number of rocks need to be like a multiple of 360, right? And we're just going to do do. And then I'm just going to remove that. Make sure second number is a multiple of 360. All right. So 15. And now uh, we're not going to put any weights here because we don't really need any. Um, Because we want it like instant. Right. So local rock is equal to meshes dot rock will connect the rock dot c frame and actually before c frame we're going to do size is equal to vector three dot new um we're going to do a randomness we're going to do randomness in a lot of the size so math dot random two and three and actually we're gonna, we're gonna make another variable. Local size is equal to that. It could either be two or three. Um and I'll just give it some eh, we'll do four as well. And then size, size, size. Sorry for the work cut. So yeah, that's like the size right there, and then we're gonna do rock dot c frame now bear with me and this is the part you might get lost at um so first what we want to do is just do that real quick i want to just make a c frame c frame at the top and we're going to do maybe not every part that c frame um times c frame that new zero i think it's 3.25 and you'll notice this is the same c frame as this right here so we just want to keep that consistent if we was doing like a raycast we won't have to do like this part but we're not going to do a raycast so yeah so now what you want to do is set the C frame to the C frame variable that we just made. Then multiply that by C frame dot 
few little angles. Uh, I heard you could do this with regular angles. I just haven't tried it yet. Because I, I just don't mind using Euler. Or Euler, however you pronounce it. But, yeah. You can uh, do whatever you want. Now do zero. Math. Dot rad. And then this will be the angle. And then we're going to multiply that by C frame dot new and we're going to do zero, zero, negative, however distance we want it to be like far away from. So let's say like, let's say like, hmm, like 18 maybe. 18 studs your rock dot parent is equal to folder right now what we want to do is delay 2.5 seconds function because we want to like we want the rocks to last longer than the effect we're going to do 2.5 in tween series colon create and then rock between info dot new point five squiggly brackets transparency is equal to one and then play. <laughs> um so we have the loop. Now we're going to test this. Pretty sure this should work with no problem. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I forgot one like crucial part. It's to make the rotation random. So whenever you want to change the orientation of something and you're doing C frame on that object, make sure you do the orientation after. Because remember, the script goes from top to bottom, right? So it'll do this first. Then it will give it like the random, uh, random orientation. And we're just going to do math dot rad random negative 180, 180. I'm just going to copy so we don't have to retype, paste, paste, make sure there's commas in between. And now we can save and test. And then we're done. We press E, and we didn't get. Oh, <laughs> got another step. I'm always forgetting stuff. But 18 is too far. You see how far that was, right? So we're gonna do like five or six actually. And then you see, remember angles. We're gonna do angles plus equal, and then 24. Remember, cause uh. 360 divided by 15 is 24. And then we're going to play it now. And we're going to test this. Press E. We have the rocks. And the rocks went away a little too fast. So let's, let's do like four seconds 4.5 seconds right no four seconds and then we're gonna make the fit in away one second make the distance 10 and uh we can save it so now we just Press E. The bam. And I don't like how it's like going way too fast. It still seems too fast to me. Uh, so four seconds. Let's do eight seconds, maybe. 
Yeah, eight seconds is fine. And uh, let's do one more thing. We're gonna make it come from the ground, right? So, right here in C frame, make this negative size, right? And then we're gonna do tween service create rock tween info dot new wait five let's do point five and this is just gonna move the rocks upwards and uh we're gonna use position rather than C frame the C frame is just gonna be wacky and just do rock dot position plus vector three dot new zero size zero and now that you have that the rock should spawn underground and then come up and i think the rocks are too big <laughs> so i'm gonna make them smaller all right so press e you see how the rocks came up and it went away oh now i know why it was going away too fast so let's make this five seconds instead of eight seconds. That's like overkill. So remember this like loop. Copy this line, right? And then do if object dot name is not equal to rocks or rock. Then and then you paste the tween in there. So this should ignore the rocks, right? And let's say like four seconds and the full move is going to last like five seconds so four and then plus one so that's five i'm going to play <laughs> this is going to be a long video <laughs> oh it's short actually it seems short but press e bam and then it ignores the rocks and then the rocks will go away just like that i know we can have them like go down so we can just like copy the position and then paste it here and then just do negative size and this this is like how we'll create moves is so just like trying different things one more thing before the video ends <laughs> uh so go back to the service group and then do uh Scroll up, do local deep breeze. Well, we don't need to do that actually. We can do under folder.parent equals workspace, do gain.debris add item folder, and we said the move will last five seconds. And then we need to do the cooldown, which is we're gonna do delay five seconds function. So just gonna wait until the, the first move is actually done. And then it's going to do spin fire client player. And now when we test, you'll be able to use the move multiple times. I'm glad I caught that like as soon as I ended the, the previous recording. So now I can edit these together. So do that. I can move out. Once it goes down, and then we can reuse the move again. You see, and you could probably like double this with like camera shake and all that. But yeah, so if you enjoyed this video, um, hit the like, sub, share. Let me know what you want to see next. Uh, I'm not gonna give you false hopes because <laughs> I keep doing that, so I'm gonna stop doing that. Um, I want to get like five videos recorded this week i'm gonna try to do like one or two one two or three today one of them right and you're at least getting one this week and uh yeah so uh thanks for watching